uh, of course, uh, this is the uh, first question for the quiz. Uh, we can. This is a photograph which everybody can see. Uh, of course, even the male members who have attended the quiz and. As far as the responses are concerned, we can see that there are many boys who, who are actually able to make this correct answer as well too. So first of all, hats off to the boys who managed to get this answer right. Uh, so the first question is about, uh, is this image an example of a business formals? So we have 44% of the, of the students who have actually corrected uh, the answer. And uh, the correct answer is that it's a business casual. So can we can we have the students who have marked this as a yes that why they thought this is a business casual? I mean, everybody can uh, type their answers uh, on the chat box. No belt. OK, so we have one answer. No belt. Can we have more? Can we and can we have more people more, one more time? Since since we've got the first answer, let's address that first. OK, there are sleeves, no belt, no tie. OK, this is a woman wearing a, an outfit, so obviously a tie is not really mandatory. Uh, a belt is not really mandatory for business casuals or formals or otherwise for that matter. Right. So uh, and especially with women, it can be it, there are a lot of flexibility, uh, but I'm not able to see the right right answer out here as to why people people are saying that it is business formal. Business we casual. Have lot of answers yeah, now. need a dark color outfit. I finally got that. Who so, somebody said need a dark color outfit. It was I think Ankur. Yeah. So Ankur is perfect, perfectly right in his in his rational. Uh, the outfit is uh, for lack of any other any other color, it's probably fawn in color or light brown. Uh, Ankur, you got that right. You read the presentation well. Business formals are usually dark in color. The jacket or the suit has to be dark. The shirt can be light. Uh, the jacket and the uh, and the suit needs to be needs to be dark. And of course, I've got one more correct uh, input out here: are folded sleeves. I think that is Hina Harlalka. Yeah, Hina, you're also right. Open hair is not a problem, Hina. Uh, leaving your hair open is completely your choice, so long as you not you don't allow it to you know go all over the place. But if it is uh, if it is held in place properly, if it is if it's kept behind your shoulders, this is a photo shoot. So in the photo shoot, the person can uh, uh, can put the hair in front of the shoulder, which is fine. But when you're when you're sitting in front of an interviewer or at work, if the hair is behind the shoulder, it'd be great. As such, from a from a look perspective, hair is not a problem. But the folded sleeves and the light color are the two big reasons why this is business casual and not business formal. So. Thank you very much, Hina and Ankur, for contributing with your answers. We are at 139 people. 60 people have attempted the quiz so far. The remaining 70 to 80 people who are here right now can go online, attempt the quiz, and please add your answers. As we go along, we will be asking more and more questions and answers. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I think we've got we a question. And now we have 64. Okay. I have a yes. question from Raghu Nandan. What attire is expected in an interview for top multinational companies? That's the last question. Uh, Raghunandar, would you like to go off mute and ask the question and be, give a little clarification on what exactly do you mean? Raghunandan, can you hear us? All right, Raghunandan, I'm going to answer the question. Uh, I'm guessing you are struggling to get yourself off mute. Uh, what attire is expected? Let me read the question again. What attire is expected in an MBA interview for top multinational companies? The answer is business formals as a thumb rule. However, several different multinational organizations will have different standards. So for example, if you're walking into an interview with IBM, then the norm at IBM is business formals period. However, if you're walking into an interview with Levi's and if you wear a pant suit, then it will appear a little weird, right? So uh, you have to align yourself to the organization that you're interviewing for. The intent of this this session or this course that you're that that's being done, which is next to impossible to cover in an hour, uh, and I was telling one even we were prepping for this that this session took me in the range it, it took me about four or five sessions with your senior batch to actually cover on little little more than half of what has been covered with you guys. So you guys will take at least what about 10, 10 hours, ten to twelve hours to go through this particular session. But uh, with whatever limitations we've got. 
it's best to clarify what is the expected dress code with the organization that you're walking across for an interview. Before the interview, if you can ask that question, it would be great. There is absolutely no harm in asking a question or seeking clarification before the interview. Keep that in mind. That's one thing that I insist on and I one thing that I keep pushing most of my students is to ask questions. So feel free to ask the organization, so what is the expected dress code? If there is no answer or no satisfactory answer that you get, then err on the side of caution, unless and until the organization is in the casual wear industry. So if the organization is, let's say, a Levi's or a killer jeans or uh, uh, a Calvin Klein for that matter, uh, or a Tommy Hilfiger for that matter, then smart casual is the way to go. Uh, jeans with a, a nice uh, check shirt, uh, and if you want, maybe a jacket on it would be great. Uh, with with loafers or with uh, slip-on shoes would be fine. Uh, however, if the answer is specifically given by the organization, and if the organization is not in the uh, business of apparel or casual wear, then always wear business formals. I hope that it addresses your question, Raghudu. I haven't got any other now, so from anybody. So all right, more questions are coming. Uh, Nandini is asking what not to wear on a job interview. Nandini, as I just answered, what is to be worn? Uh, anything which does not fall under this should not be worn. So please do not wear jeans to an interview unless and until you're interviewing with a jeans company. And if you're interviewing with a jeans company, then make sure that you wear the jeans of that organization that you're interviewing for. Uh, otherwise, casual wear is an absolute no-no. Uh, Prachi. Chomal is asking, is it suitable for girls to wear a tie with a formal shirt without a blazer? So or, is there any particular color or like jewels? Do we need to wear that like jewels or a particular color that we uh, not to wear on, on the interview? So Nandini, agar, okay, Nandini, this is all the answers in your presentations, but I will tell you one more What not to wear in a job interview, if I were to break it down, uh, when you are when you work when you are wearing business formals, uh, you obviously cannot wear chunky jewelry. You can't be overtly made up. You cannot be wearing bright lipstick or bright makeup. You cannot be uh, uh, wearing uh, metallic stuff which can create some kind of a glare. If you wear spectacles, then make sure that the spectacles are formal framed spectacles uh, uh, and not a bright color. Uh, avoid wearing any bright or dark colored shirts. Make sure that the jacket or the suit is dark, but the shirt should be should be light. So all these answers are there in the presentation if you go through. But I hope I've able, been able to summarize some of the questions that you had in mind. If you have yeah, something yeah, yeah. very, very specific to clarify, please go ahead and ask. I am OK to take as many questions as you have specifically. OK, okay thank you so much, sir. Anything else? Any specific clarification you wanted, Nandini? No, no, no. Right now, uh, not anything. Perfect. So I'm moving to what Prachi okay. is asking. Prachi is asking, is it suitable for girls to wear a tie with a formal shirt without a blazer? So first things first. Uh, our recommendation is always going to be to wear a suit uh, and not a blazer in, in independently. Blazer independently is not really really formal it's not a business formal outfit a blazer is blazer will form fall into business casuals or smart casuals so first things first don't really indulge yourself in a blazer and more importantly blazers blazers have a particular style of being worn so you wear a particular blazer with a particular pair of trousers so you can't wear let's say a navy blue blazer with a black trouser it looks really off so you've got to and and a navy blue plain blazer in itself look, looks a little off because it usually lands up looking bulkier and bigger than what it should be. A suit is what makes you look really tight. A blazer does not really make you look tight. So first things first, I would say avoid blazers, period. Uh, is it suitable for, a, for girls to wear a tie? Uh, Prachi, if you think you're confident enough to carry off a tie in an interview, uh, by all means. Uh, but but understand this, that it's not normal for a girl to wear a tie. So you would be going against the grain and you would be you would be going against the grain in a manner that might be making a statement. Now, if the person or the organization that you are that you are uh, that you're interviewing with is not 
someone or not an organization that prefers people who go against the grain, it may work against you. However, if it's an organization that allows people to go against the grain and express themselves, then it would be a very, very solid, safe bet to take. So there is really, as I said, Prashi, no thumb rule that says you can or cannot wear a tie. Uh, I'd be very happy if you wear a tie, I, if you were to interview with me. But an organization that's a little uh, formal or a little traditional may not really uh, appreciate a woman wearing a tie. It all it, it, it boils down to being a little subjective. So pick and choose the organization with which you would probably be doing this. Uh, Prachi, I hope I've been able to answer your question. I'm moving to the next question from Shubh. Sir, check shirts are good for an interview. Uh, Shubh, uh, the response to the question will again be again fall under business formal or business casual or smart casual. If the dress code recommended is smart casual, then check shirts are okay. If the dress code recommended is business casual, then micro checks are the only checks which should be allowed, uh, along with a with a proper suit or a proper jacket. Uh, regular checks, motor motor checks, hote hain, wo smart casual mein hi pen sakte ho, wo business casual mein nahi pen sakte. Uh, Abhishek, can boys keep long hair? When going for an interview, if yes, should it be tied? Uh, yes, Abhishek, again, it depends on the organization that you're interviewing with. If it's a traditional organization, they frown upon long hair. Even organizations such as Levi's, for example, where I, uh, you might see some of my pictures on Facebook. If you were to go back about seven, eight years, I had shoulder length hair. I grew my hair when I was with Levi's and it was an organization that allowed stuff like this because they would allow you to express yourself. But regular B2B organizations and traditional Indian organizations really don't, don't encourage growing your hair. Uh, they would expect your hair to be cropped right at the bay, uh, worst case at the base of the neck, if not, if not higher. Uh, if you have long hair and if long hair is what you want to retain, then, you, then you've got to then pick and choose the organizations that you apply to. And yes, it should be tied back neatly. It cannot be left loose. Uh, Jay Mehta, sir, what about the beard? Should be cleaned or with suitable and decent beard? Uh, facial hair rules have been explained in the presentation. Uh, either absolutely clean shaven or fully grown, well maintained beard. No stubbles, no patchy beards, nothing in between. So if you are one who has patchy beards and if you can look at the presentation, you will get the answers or the images will show you what a patchy beard and what a stubble is. Uh, if you're going to go through the, the images, you will understand what, what is not allowed. Uh, for those who, uh, who, 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 are, who are people who sport a beard, make sure that you grow the beard fully and make sure that the beard is always neatly trimmed and well maintained when you go for an interview. It's not that there is, there is something wrong with keeping a beard, but what usually happens is people don't really keep their beard well. They don't comb it properly. They don't set it properly. And then it's really, really ugly. Uh, make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, Shubh again asks a question. How many formal dresses should boys have during their, M their MBA degree? Shubh, if you read the presentation again, you would have got the answer for that. Clearly, you have not read the presentation. So I recommend that you go back. Here is what we recommend. The answer is there in the section for suits as well as shirts. We recommend that you have at least two suits, one in navy blue and one in uh, charcoal or one in gray. Uh, two suits, you should have at least uh, one, two, two, three white shirts and one blue, one pink, one yellow and all light shades. These are the solid color shirts. Over and above that, if you want to indulge in checks stripes, make sure that you have three or four checks stripe shirts in the same colors, but the stripes should be pin striped, very, very, very thin stripes, not really thick stripes, and micro checks. So you will see all of these examples in the presentation if you read them, read the presentation. So eight to 10 formal shirts, uh, two suits, one, uh, 
navy blue and one in charcoal gray or one in dark gray uh, and at least four or five ties uh, three striped ties and two printed ties is what we have recommended uh, in addition to that have two pairs of black trousers one dark gray trouser one dark blue trouser and a brown a dark brown trouser that's five trousers uh preferably two pairs of shoes one one brown and one black uh and at least eight to 12 pairs of socks of the same color as the trouser so so at least two pairs of socks per trouser that you've got so in the and the socks should be of the same color as the trouser uh should i believe i given you the whole nine yards with respect to how many formal dresses a uh, so when you join ubs when you when you actually walk into ubs this year we we going to implement probably what is a full formal dress code so you will be expected to come in business formals at least four days out of out of six days in a week uh, and therefore to that extent if you go through the presentation as i said you will get the answer to the number of clothes that you are expected to have other than that you are free to have as many clothes as you want for your non formal days that's your call completely uh i have a question here from tamogna day uh, tamogna did i get your name right i hope i pronounced it right uh there are any accessories that are necessary for an interview or example are watches necessary no tamogna accessories are not a necessity accessories are always something that uh that we are that we add uh as a value and not uh something that is mandatory and there are rules and guidelines that you use for accessories for example a watch if you're wearing watches on business formals or business casuals the strap should be the same color as your trouser and your shoes so your belt your trouser your shoes and your watch strap should be of the same color or uh not not trousers sorry your belt your shoes and your watch strap should be of the same color so if you're wearing a blue trouser navy blue trouser for example and you're wearing a black belt and black shoes then your watch strap should be black in color similarly if you're wearing a brown belt and brown shoes your watch strap should be brown in color uh other than that uh go to the section which talks about accessories and you will get most of your answers in the presentation uh avoid chunky jewelry avoid anything metallic uh till the time you are wearing smart casuals or casuals so minute you go to casuals pretty much anything goes uh hina uh sir for girls collar should be inside the blazer or outside whether it is girls or guys collar should always be inside the jacket first of all start saying suit and not blazer blazers are not formal blazers are at best business casuals in my books they are smart casuals so you either wear a suit or you're not wearing a suit uh, and if you're wearing a shirt the collar should be inside the blazer or jacket or suit and is it necessary to close one button of the blazer there are rules for buttons when you're standing one button should be closed when you're sitting down the button should be open Hina, I'm hoping I've answered that question. Anshul, uh, is it okay to go to an interview with a handlebar moustache and a stubble beard? Stubble beard, absolutely no, no, Anshul. Handlebar moustache, perfectly fine, so long as it's groomed, trimmed, and kept in place. Make sure that you put beard uh, or moustache cream on it and make sure it is held in space, held in place. It should not look ugly. It should look neat and neatly trimmed. Okay. uh chirag thakkar the same answer applies to you uh trimmed is not equal to stubble i hope you understand that it should be a full grown beard it can't be patchy and it cannot be a stubble uh so the shoe should be pointed at the end or round or else loafers loafers are an absolute no no loafers are casual or smart casual at best shoe should not be pointed you are expected to have oxford cut shoes okay so uh, or derby shoes uh, look at the presentation you will find the answer again chirag very clearly you have not seen the presentation uh, oxford cuts and derby cuts both with laces one in brown one in black brown goes with brown trousers and brown suits black will go with all the other colors siddharth 
sir if you're going for a video conference with an organization or an interviewer from our homes itself then what is the best suitable option to wear so that the option to wear does not depend on whether it's a video conference or a face to face the attire depends on the organization and what the organization defines if the organization says smart casual then you wear smart casual whether it's a video conference or whether it's face to face it doesn't really matter all right i believe i've exhausted all the questions on chat uh, vani you want to go to the next question and yes, uh, so, right we have the next yeah. question now go. and these are the three images and students are supposed to answer the right match the right image so the first image is actually a smart casual that's the correct answer and we have 81% of the students who have actually corrected this answer fantastic then we have the second image and again for second image we have 81 students who have selected the right answer for the third image right. that's that's business formals and again we have 84% who have selected the right answer perfect everybody clear on why these are respectively smart casual business casual and business formal if you have a doubt please feel free to ask so now we right, move i guess on to no questions on this yeah question 3 these are the four images uh, which of course have different different styles so for the first one the correct answer is smart casual for the second one all four are smart casual yes vani all four are smart casuals exactly <laughs> uh, the yeah <laughs> So all four are smart casuals. Just because you're wearing a jacket or just because you're wearing a blazer does not make the attire formal or business casual. Look at the combination and look at the kind of blazer. In image image one and image three, very clearly, I don't think there is an explanation required. One image image four is a bright blue shirt or a t-shirt, therefore it's it's smart casual. Image one is a sweater with a shirt inside and a pair of jeans, which is smart casual. Image two and three are where the confusion would probably have been. Uh, two, the gentleman is wearing a t-shirt, a, a sweater inside with a collared t collared shirt, as well as a pair of what I can only assume is cotton trousers. But most importantly, the jacket that he's wearing is a is a check jacket, if you notice very closely. And image three, while he's wearing a tie, he's wearing a light colored jacket and dark blue trousers now this combination is smart casual a light colored jacket with a dark trouser is always smart casual unless an un and and vice versa so even if even a dark colored jacket with a light colored trouser is also smart casual it's not business casual so keep that in mind for future reference so that's the reason why image b and c are smart casual and we have maximum people who have actually uh, selected uh, business casual on this. So we only have 29% 29, 29 of the people who have actually made the right answer for image B. And for image B, uh, only 6% right. of the students have actually made it correct. Most of the people actually thought it's that's, uh, business casual. That's perfectly fine. I expected if you if they guys, if they were uh, that good, then they would be teaching us and not the other way around. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. So now we'll move on to the next question. Right. I have no idea what I did. I think I did something wrong, but my screen. Ah, there it is. My screen sharing is back. Okay. Go on. So we have four images here. This is uh, a question primarily for. So image one is business formal. Clearly, that's correct. Image two is smart casual. Image four is smart casual. And image C is business casual. Vani, you want to take over and tell them why? If yeah. anybody's got so this wrong. Exactly. So uh, we had a uh, majority of the people who have corrected uh, first and the second one as the right answer. Of course, uh, the third one was mm -hmm. confused. Uh, we had approximately 59% of the people who actually marked that as business formal. Uh, and uh, very few people actually made it business casual as the right answer. So one of the reasons uh, why image C hey. is a business casual uh, is simply because of the reason of the shirt so if you actually see the image the shirt is a printed uh, shirt and also the sleeves of the coat is three-fourth 
So uh, three fourth sleeves are usually considered as a business casual, not as a business formal. Uh, no doubt there's a coat and a skirt uh, and the color is dark, so it falls under business formal. But because of the shirt and, and, and the hair styling, it is actually a business casual. So anybody have any questions to ask on this? I yeah, think it should uh, be clear so, then. Uh, Siddharth, anybody else who has questions, sir, I have a question It's not required to be asked. Just put in a question. Yeah. You don't need to take permission. Just put your question on chat. I'm fine with that. Sir, I have a question on previous image. On the previous image, which is the which is question three. Yeah, tell me. Third image, uh, the person is wearing a, a black, uh, gray coat. It also okay, looks so, like a business or business or casual. Yeah, so black, light suit, light jacket with dark trousers or dark jacket with light trousers so if the color contrast exists between jacket and and trousers so if they, if if both the jacket and trousers are not dark or see unless it's a suit it does not fall under business casual if you don't have a suit then wear just because you've got a jacket don't wear it wear a jacket or a suit and only when it complements your outfit so net net what i'm trying to tell you is business formal suit Business casual does not have any jacket at all. It's a, it's optional because it's very difficult to find the right jacket to wear. Business casual is also a jacket or a, or a suit without a tie. What is shown in image C is a is is an image that is or is a look that is perceived or it's by definition smart casual because a contrasting color jacket and trouser is always considered to be casual. It's not considered to be formal. And sir, uh, tie with stripes are considered as business formal. Sorry, what with what what is considered business formal? That tie with stripes, like in the third image. Yeah, yeah. So if in the if in the third image, this gentleman had worn a suit with exactly everything else remaining identical, it would have become business formal. If he had worn a blue suit, for example, or a or a or a grey suit, if he had worn the same grey uh, jacket that he's wearing, if he has the same if the if the trouser was from the same material this would have suddenly become business formal because it's contrasting it's no longer it's no longer business appropriate so it's not business casual uh, or business formal like sir this person is wearing the tie with stripes yeah tie with stripes is the only tie that is recommended uh, plain tie sir so when you when you are buying your ties ensure that you always buy striped ties so you buy in my in my presentation, I've recommended a minimum of two to three stripe, three to five striped ties. So nice different colors. Uh, multiple multiple stri colored stripes are also good. It's it's fine to have multi it's a fine to have stripes of let's say three different shades of blue or or gray blue and white so on and so forth. So ties have to be striped. Formal ties are always striped. It's not that printed ties are not formal. Printed ties are also formal, but printed ties need to be muted in color. So my point to you is this. Most of these questions are coming up because the presentation has not been read. I'm happy to answer the questions, but it will be so much you. easier if you had read the presentation. If you read the presentation and you still have doubts on the same, despite the answers that have been given, feel free to call me back because I think I've shared my mobile number with everybody. So I'll be happy to answer questions to you one on one. If need. Okay, I've got uh, one more question from... Uh, Harshita, do all business formals are appropriate in dark color only? Harshita, yes. As a rule, business formals are always dark and not light. The minute you go light, you either you're either going business casual or you're going smart casual. Uh, white is not really considered to be a formal color. Uh, fawn, beige, uh, cream colored uh, suits are not really formal. They're, they're meant for casual and smart casual slash uh, casual atmospheres and not for formal atmospheres. Uh, Anjali is asked, answer D, please explain. Uh, uh, Vani will explain answer D of the next question. I'm assuming Anjali, correct me if I'm wrong, if it's the next question of the previous one. Anjali Mahajan, is your answer D for the for question four is what you want? I'm guessing that's what you want. So I'm asking Vani to answer that question. Vani, go ahead with your right. explanation for... So so basically, uh, out of these four images, if, if we actually see the last one, the correct answer for this is smart casual. One of the reasons this is the correct answer is, A, if you actually see the fitting of the coat, it doesn't fall under a business casual or a business formal. The fitting of a formal coat is very different from a smart, um, uh, you know, a smart dressing. Even if you're wearing a suit, 
which is which has a blazer and a pants doesn't mean it falls under a business casual or business formal so that's the reason this is under smart casual plus if you actually see the sleeves the sleeves are three fourth plus the the lady is wearing accessories on her hand and even the shirt it's the, the fitting is is on a loose side uh, so because of the entire attire with the slippers as flats, uh, that's the reason this is a smart casual. And of course, right, having uh, said that, the color being a very light color tone, uh, which usually doesn't fall okay. under a business formula. Uh, Vani, before you go on to the next question, Siddharth has a question. Does light gray fall under business formals? Siddharth, not really. Uh, light gray, avoid unless you don't have a choice. If you already have a light gray suit, then there's really not much we can do about it. But uh, our recommendation will always be navy blue, charcoal, or somewhere between light and charcoal. Charcoal is really dark gray, uh, and lighter, a lighter shade of charcoal, which should be, let's say, normal gray or, or darkish gray, is, is what we recommend. Uh, light is not really perceived to be, uh, any light color suit is not really perceived to be fully formal. Yeah. Next question, Vani. Uh, so now we have the next question. Uh, these are the four images. Uh, so for the four images, of course, uh, the first one is a business casual. It means uh, a question somewhere, Vani. Was there a was there a question before this? I'm sorry, I didn't. No, the, there were three. Oh, I mean, okay. we've already discussed the four. The, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Now go this go is go the go next go. one. Uh, so out of the four uh, ladies, of course, the one which is images C is a business formal uh, because of the proper. Suit, uh, which uh, the lady is wearing, plus she is wearing a bag. Not just a suit. Notice, look. notice that the shoes are also closed-toed shoes. Yes, exactly. So that's the reason. Yeah, nice, lovely closed-toed shoes. Go on. Uh, with, the, with the fitting of the shirt, uh, and of course with the with the proper matching attire, uh, which is everything dark. That's the reason this is a business formal. Uh, then there were confusions between B and with a lot of students as well too. So we got almost 40 to 50 percent of the students uh, marking B and B, um, especially the B one as a business. So um, a, you know. a is business casual. A and B are both business casual. So, right. uh, Vani, would you like to explain why A and B are business casual? Yes. See, one of the reasons is A. If you actually see the color of the sh of the t-shirt which they are wearing inside, uh, it is not a formal attire. Uh, if in case they would have matched a shirt with the court, then it it would have been a formal uh, attire and if you actually see the slippers of the b image uh, it's not closed uh, from the toe uh, so it's it's a slippers which uh, which is she wearing and plus even the collar of the sh of the t-shirt is is little little bit on the high side so it's a high waist t-shirt which uh, the lady is wearing uh, that's the reason it's a business casual uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know the answer is a business casual because it's a t-shirt because it's a it's a light colored t-shirt plus it's not even a shirt so because has she been wearing a shirt yeah, with this suit, right. would have fall under a formal uh, dressing. For the image B, uh, again, it's a t-shirt which she is wearing and plus the slippers. Uh, if you actually look at the heels of the lady the uh, shoes. she's wearing, yeah. it's not closed uh, from the toe. All right. So then we'll have to keep alternating this. <laughs> okay. Uh, image A and image C are very clearly business formals. Image B and D are both business casual, and these are the reasons for the same. Uh, again, I repeat, just because you're wearing a jacket or a suit does not make it formal and does not make it business. Notice that the person in B is wearing a, a, a polo neck T-shirt underneath. The polo neck T-shirt becomes a casual look. A black polo neck shirt is, is a casual attire. The suit the outfit or the look is fabulous per se, but it's not a business formal attire. It's a smart casual attire. And with the image, image D, uh, notice that the that the gentleman is wearing uh, wearing a, a suit. Agreed, but the suit, the length of the trouser is not covering the shoes. Their ankle length, so they're short, uh, and that does not qualify to be a business formal attire. A business formal attire must have the uh, trousers fall below the ankles and at least half a break in the trouser, if not a full break. A half a break is sufficient uh, so that when you stand, your socks are not visible. A and C are both proper business formal attires. I hope that answers any doubts people might have. Uh, Vani, let's move on to the next question. 
Okay, so now we move on to the next question. So these are the four images uh, which we have. And if in case we talk about their guessing style, uh, the first one is, of course, a business formal because of the of the suit uh, which is matching and it's a it's of the perfect dark color which is she wearing. Uh, plus with the bellies, uh, it's closed um, from the from the toe. Then, if in case we speak about the second image, uh, the second image is of course a business casual because of the kind of dressing which she is wearing. Uh, then the C and the D, if in case we talk about both are smart casuals, uh, simply because, uh, you know, the, in the image C, she's wearing a dress which has a belt, uh, it's a little bit flashy, and even the jacket is not a formal jacket. Um, with the image in the D, uh, she's wearing sleeveless, and sleeveless is not considered a part of the of, of a formal uh, dressing. Uh, of course, the length is perfectly fine. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of a length which is uh, also uh, suitable or suggested for a formal dressing. It should be anything which is uh, touching the knee or a little bit below the knee. So if in case we see image A, uh, the dress is slightly below the knee, uh, which is perfect. That's the reason it's perfect for a business formal. And for image C and D, uh, because it's just at the knee and as the colors are very bright and it's a sleeveless dressing that's why they are considered as casuals uh, not as formal dressing uh, and they doesn't fall under this uh, not anything just, you want to add in okay uh, in addition to that yeah in addition to that money uh what makes c and d smart casual and not formal are the other colors in the prints so uh the the bright blue nature or the bright blue color of of the, uh, or the, or the lovely blue color that uh, the lady is wearing is slightly more on the casual uh, uh, casual uh, dress code per se. And, uh, and the animal print uh, dress that or, or the multi printed dress that the lady is wearing in C is also considered to be more of a, uh, a casual uh, look. But the way she's coupled it along with the jacket as well as the belt makes it look smart casual. So it's a I, at no point of time am I saying any of these outfits are not suited for workwear. Uh, all four outfits are fabulous to to walk in to work with. I would not go with image C and D for an interview for sure. Uh, if you're going for an interview, then it's either image A or image, image B at worst case. Seventy-seven people who have actually answered the quiz. So while we are talking, uh, <laughs> we have another fifteen okay. people who have gone ahead and answered the quiz. So that's that's a good sign, and and, yeah. so, and whatever percentages which we are talking about, they're all being updated by right, uh, as and when we are talking. So, uh, so I would want to explain so this. Uh, I'd like to, so here's a moment I'd like to pick pick on Siddharth's question. Siddharth, if you notice the gentleman on the left, the suit that the gentleman is wearing, that's a grey suit. Uh, now, uh, anything lighter than this grey, or let's say if you go if you go towards the the trouser of the gentleman on the right. Uh, I would say up to that, it would be okay, but anything lighter than that will become very casual. So uh, avoid anything lighter than the than the trouser that the gentleman on the right is wearing. So this is the next one. UBS recommends that gentlemen should carry four suits, one in each color: navy blue, charcoal, gray, and black. Yeah, the answer is and navy blue and one one any of the two colors of navy blue, charcoal, or gray. Uh, pick your choice. I would recommend a navy blue and a charcoal. Uh, but if you want to make charcoal and gray, or if you want to pick, and 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 I'm and we are happy if you pick two navy blues or you pick two charcoals. That's fine. That's that's okay by by us completely. But it's always good to have some variety in your wardrobe. And uh, I, I I guess I'll answer the next question in the same breath. Uh, I think the next question is also about is is for women, right? One, if I'm not mistaken, if you could scroll down, yeah, that was for women. Now for women, what we would recommend is take one or or get a a pants suit in one color and get a skirt suit in a different color now you have a you have a choice between both men and women we have a choice for men i very strongly recommend that you stitch your pants suit stitch your suit uh walk across to a raymond store get the guy in the raymond store to to stitch a suit for you uh if you're close enough to a raymond made to measure the best place to get su suit stitched is Raymond made to measure? I'm going to I'm going to write it on the chat box. Uh, the best place for suits and for women, if you can get your suit stitched, it will be great. If you can't, 
Then you can look at Alan Solly and you can look at Van Huesen. Both of them are, are, have excellent options. But make sure with women, you, be, you have one skirt suit and one pant suit. Now, if you're uncomfortable with a skirt suit, then make sure that you have one pant suit of each color. Uh, you might have a, you might have discomfort wearing a skirt, and we perfectly understand that. That's your call completely. While we would recommend otherwise, but if you want, if you're not comfortable with it, there's really no compulsion that you have to have a skirt suit in your wardrobe. Please feel free to buy two pant suits if you want to, but make sure that they're, but try and make sure that there are different colors. It just adds that much variety to your wardrobe. But that's the only recommendation. And make sure that both are fitted identically. So the way it works is if you walk across to a maid to measure for, for gentlemen, or you walk across to a, a, a proper tailor for for uh, women uh, who can stitch suit for you, it'll be great. Ideally, for men, also get your formal plain plain shirts, the solid shirts, the, the white, blue, pink, and yellow that are recommended, stitched at the Raymond Maid to measure itself. Uh, they will be expensive. They will be a, they will be slight, uh, distinctly on the higher side. Uh, however, I can guarantee that once you stitch them, uh, you won't need to find anything extra for the next four to five years. If you want to add a business casual look to your your wardrobe, then the same colors or or, or any or any uh, color that you I, I I think three questions before four questions before you saw. Uh, the image A in the uh, where we where we called out image B as uh, business formal and image A as business casual. Uh, if you could go back to that one, the one before this, I think, the one before this. Yeah, the look that you see on the on the left, no, 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 the one after this, after this, Bani after this. Yeah, the look that you see on the extreme left hand side, a uh, a top like that uh, would be. A business casual top, uh, and usually a look like that with any color, so long as the uh, the suit is gray or the suit is blue. If it's a blue suit, then the number of shirts you can or tops you can match with them are going to be very limited because blue goes with white, blue goes with uh, with light blue or shades of blue, uh, blue goes a little bit with with gray, uh, but doesn't really go with too many other colors. But gray, on the other hand, goes with with a lot of colors. You'll see gray will go with maroon. It'll go with with uh, even even the red for that matter, uh, or yellow, or with a little bit of a, a, a bright shade of yellow. Avoid anything which is bright for any interview or any any professional environment. Uh, make sure that you wear, if it's business casual, wear something which is uh, a shirt or a top like this that's shown in the image. Wear it in either a, a, a light or a dark shade but don't wear it in a bright shade bright shade is in the same image that you see image d that's a bright red anything which is bright creates a glare in the eyes of the person in front of you so therefore avoid it especially for interviews and for work i hope you have clarified that similar so Vani, let's move forward yeah yeah and and before i forget if you when you go to um, Multiple choice answers, not the ones which you have to pick across columns. In multiple choice answers, the explanation is also given in the in the question uh, after the question. Once you give the answer, you will see the explanation. So uh, make sure that you read that. Uh, don't forget to read that. Not now, but as you have attempted it again. So I'm going to keep the quiz open for the next few days. Feel free to attempt the quiz as and when you go through the presentation. This is the kind uh, of Vani, feedback let's move on to the next question. is mentioned. Yeah, so, so the feedback is, the is what one. I have. Feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Feedback is the answer in addition to uh, this thing. So, like I said, bright reds and yellows are best for business casual, so on and so forth. Okay. The next question is the gentleman wearing the blue shirt. Uh, here you can go to the to the feedback and read the feedback. It'll. Uh, why is this not showing the feedback? Very strange. Can you click on the question? You'll probably see the feedback then. No, I think because this is a corrected answer, that's the reason it's not showing the feedback here. Oh, maybe it's not like the feedback. Okay. Uh, okay. So all of the above, actually. So the 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 shirt is too tight. The uh, tie is a little little on the thinner side. It has to be slightly more thick than what it is. The person's not really not not wearing a belt, which makes it look a little less formal. Also, notice very carefully that the person wearing a button-down collar. Now, button-down collars 
demand that you don't wear a tie and you wear a wear a jacket instead so the minute you wear a tie with a button down collar you are actually going completely against the laws of uh, or the rules of dressing up so therefore by default this becomes smart casual at best uh, also notice that the person not really shaved so the stubble is very visible so it's a very ugly look very honest all right one let's move to the next one yeah uh, before you move uh, harshita is asking please recommend pant slash skirt suit colors harshita the answer is clearly given in the presentation in the section for pants and and skirts uh, dark color pants and skirts uh, remember that if you are uh, this is other other than the suits that you're making uh, if you're making two pants uh, two skirts then they will more or less do the job for you and above that if you want to buy separate skirts for yourself then black blue gray or blue. look at the presentation whenever you find the time uh, all right one let's move on we are already short of time actually it's past 5 so uh, this is on, the Mali. look or next question is talking about yeah. uh, is this i mean is this uh, okay for a business formals uh, so the answer is yes uh, uh, because of course it's mentioned that she would be wearing a suit uh, with it so uh, you know the color of the shirt is absolutely fine and even the buttons which are no doubt they're black uh, still it's it would actually go with the suit if in case she wears with the formal matching suit bang on right money that's correct move to the next question please yeah this is the next one the correct answer is all of the above it is all of all of the above again yeah so here again look at look at the the tie is a uh, slight uh, is even if you zoom on it you can see it's a self design but it's it looks solid uh the the very clearly visible that the person is not bothered to shave much uh there's a stubble the person's watch matches the trouser and not the belt the watch strap should match the belt and the shoes and not the trouser that is more important so so keep that in mind so those are the three reasons why this is uh, actually this is just sloppy very honestly if you ask me it's not really well dressed at all let's quickly now move let's to the move next on, one money. so uh, is this look for a smart casual so answer for that is that the shirt is absolutely fine but not the jeans so if in case we see the jeans uh, any any torn jeans is not acceptable uh, at work uh, but of course if in case the shirt would have been matched with a black plain jeans or a black plain trousers then it would have gone a perfect look for a casual as well too uh, so this is the answer to that and i'm assuming everybody would have guessed it right so yes we have majority people who have answered this correctly as well too now we'll move on to the next one so is this shirt as a is considered as a business yeah, just casual just to add to the point shirt. vani again from a work from a work perspective yeah just adding to the point from a work perspective as you say as you as you said see it depends on the organization that you're working for very clearly I, again repeat now when i was when i was employed with levi's and i was employed with levi's for 5 years i really didn't care as to whether the jeans were torn or not in fact they would they would be encouraged but if you if you're not working for an apparel company then you can't wear this so if you guys are really comfortable and you want to wear clothes that express yourselves then align yourself to organizations that will respect what you what you're getting at the table these are the guidelines that we're talking about are guidelines for attire in general what attire is applicable to what organization is a call that the organization takes so we will not tell you to wear a uh, formal clothes for a levi's interview please keep that because it's very very clear in your heads we are not here to force something down your throat we are here to show you or give you guidelines what guidelines are applicable to which organization is the call that the organization takes and not uh, vani and kartik i hope that's absolutely clear with you guys uh, yes yeah, so what I, what i would recommend then uh, uh, rahul if it's if it's not much of a worry uh, it's depending totally on the time is that um, and and hopefully the next time we meet these guys it'll be on campus and and not uh, over a call considering that is all is this enough hope that the lockdown will not probably last beyond the first week of june uh i'm going to leave the last 5 minutes to uh, to for people to ask whatever questions that they want to ask uh and i'm going to leave the quiz open for as long as people want the quiz to be open uh rather is if it's possible for you to organize uh, 
one more rest for success session because as i said earlier and i've been telling this to vani ever since it, it took me 6 to 7 sessions to do this with the seniors uh, it's right. a little unfair to do the same thing in in our 15 minutes right so uh, so let's so uh, leave the rest of the yeah so let let me play the role of the moderator and take the questions for you uh, and then in the next 5 minutes so we have only 5 minutes so we'll take up the two three questions so the one question which is very interesting uh, i'll ask you uh, from you only what should we wear if we go for google interview all right what should we wear if you go for an interview with google okay google google as an organization whatever little that i know about it and whatever little i've interacted with i've got a couple of friends who work with google up way up in the senior level uh google is a very very smart casual uh work atmosphere uh again it depends on the here it goes down to the role that you're performing so if you're in a customer facing role and if you're in a client facing role then smart casual if you're in an office role then you can actually walk in in your chaddis if you want to uh, google doesn't really bother about uh, dress code much as much as talent uh, google but but the number of organizations like google in this world are very limited so you might probably find that kind of a work culture or a work environment with a google with a facebook with with a lot of these uh, uh, dot com entrepreneurial kind of organizations but remember that the second you move to a customer facing role then the customer's dress code is defined defines your dress code so if the customer's dress code is formal so for example if you're with google and you're approaching a tata group for a sales deal then you will go dressed fully in formals or at least in business casual if not if not business formals but if you are a google developer or you are not expected to go to the customer location any time during the day and you're walking into the office or full day working in the office then you can walk in with shorts in google it doesn't really matter this is this is the last question of this session and let me take this uh, opportunity to ask this question from divani Uh, so one yes, as please. we have approximately 40 45% of our student uh, are female uh, and they always look kind of a success mantra in terms of the power dressing so in two line in short and crispy uh, i just want to understand from you what message you want to give us our students for the dressing in the campus uh, not for the interview of course thank you so much uh, rahul for asking this fantastic question so uh, if in case i want to describe this in a line or two i would you know start a saying that wear what is comfortable because that is something which is very important for everyone uh, of course for females as well as for males uh, whatever you wear try to make it as a perfect fit whether it's formals or casuals uh, it should of course be a, it should be comfortable it should be your size and be uh, whatever you, you should feel com- uh, comfortable and confident in whatever you're wearing because if in case you're confident then nothing can be uh, you know taken away even if you're wearing shorts or or jeans uh, and 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 you want to walk into a interview so you know back of your head you should know that why are you wearing this you know uh, and you 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 should have justifications for that uh that is of course uh, i mean three three tips uh, you know which i would like to give uh, okay. very of it uh, comfortable and be confident thank you uh, uh, vani uh, that's that's absolutely good to understand that comfort is the more important uh, so let me take this uh, chance to thank you both of you vani and uh, karthik it was wonderful session uh, i'm sure our student have learned a lot and they must be thinking about the shopping after this once the lockdown will be over the kind of the you know dress code you guys have given them so they they must start short listing and once the lockdown will over they will run towards the shops before coming to the campus and it's not only to the student even you know the people like me the persons like me also got lot of insights uh, and i know why you are laughing uh, so it's okay uh, so thank you karthik and vani both of you and thank you student uh you know for the wonderful session and patience for you know entire session uh thanks a lot bye bye most Have welcome nice thank you so much and even if uh, as rahul mentioned about shopping any one of you your you know you're in market or you are shop- doing online shopping and you're confused what to buy what not to buy feel free to drop us a message i mean i am happy to you know receive messages as well too and i'm sure even karthik would be say no Don't, don't 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 take that kind of the responsibility <laughs> uh, i'm sure student will be like this if you have offered now uh, thank you fair enough thank you so much yeah bye 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 thank you